Hi everyone. So the other day I was working on my web app called Edit Dojo and I ran into a really nasty bug. It took me a long time to solve it, maybe like four hours. And uh, you know, overall it was just a terrible experience just debugging it. But I decided to take this opportunity to you know, talk about debugging in this video. So I'm gonna first walk you through how I solved this particular bug exactly. And then along the way, I'm also gonna give you some uh, general tips on debugging. So you'll be able to use these tips uh, on any programming language, even though I'm gonna be using Python in this particular video. Okay, so here's the website I'm making. Uh, right now, I'm running this website locally. Uh, you can tell that just by looking at the URL bar. Uh, this is the IP address that represents my local server. Now, when you scroll down on this uh, landing page, and when you click this button uh, that says sign up, sign in with Twitter, you can sign up or sign in with Twitter, go to Twitter, and then back to my website. So that's the expected behavior. But the problem was uh, when I put this website on Heroku, uh, which is a website that helps you um, host your own website in the cloud, I started getting a bug. Okay, so let me just quickly show you what the bug was exactly. Uh, let me go to the version of my website that's hosted on Heroku right here. And when I clicked uh, the same button, sign up, sign in with Twitter, I got this error, uh, social network login failure. And the funny thing was I was running exactly the same code uh, for my local server as well as on Heroku. So what's happening here? Okay, so the first thing I thought when I got this error is that the obvious difference between these two situations is the URLs. So I thought maybe I set up something incorrectly on Twitter's developer website in regards to the URLs. And that actually brings me to the first tip I wanted to talk about for debugging in general. And that is to come up with a hypothesis and test it and come up with another hypothesis and test that. So you need to you know, really think like a scientist when you're debugging. And like I said, the initial hypothesis I had for this particular bug was that maybe I set up something incorrectly on Twitter's developer website. So I checked it and I checked you know, this section in particular, callback URL, uh, I checked if it's HTTPS or HTTP, for example, I tried both, but none of those things worked. So at that point, I wanted to come up with another hypothesis, but I was sort of out of ideas. So I decided to first look into the code to try to see you know, the cause of the bug. But before doing that, I wanted to you know, reproduce the bug locally, or at least reproduce something similar to the bug locally. And that's actually my second tip for debugging. I think reproducing the bug locally is important because you know, trying to find the cause of a bug usually takes a lot of trials and errors. And you need to you know, sometimes play around with the code too. And if you do it with the server, it might take a lot of time just communicating with the server. So ideally, when it's possible and when it's convenient, you should try to reproduce uh, the same bug or a similar bug locally and then analyze it there first. And in this particular case, I just went back to uh, Twitter's developer website and then I actually deleted uh, one of the callback URLs, you know, the one for the local server. And when I did that, and when I tried the same thing again on the local server, I actually got the same error. So this is not necessarily the same bug, but I thought, you know, once I analyze this particular error, I'll be able to use, you know, the insight I can get from that analysis to find the cause of the original bug. So that's exactly what I did. And to analyze uh, the error that I just created on my local server more carefully, I started reading into the source code. And that's actually my third tip, uh, to read the source code carefully and then play around with it. And this process was actually not that simple for me because I was using this uh, pretty big open source library called Django All Auth. Uh, you know, you don't always have to read the source code of every single library you're using. But I think it's pretty common uh, to have to be able to read other people's code. For example, if you end up uh, working with other developers at work. Anyway, I started looking through this code base some more and I found this directory uh, that says Twitter. So I thought, you know, this must be uh, the relevant uh, directory here because we're using uh, Twitter logins. And, you know, for example, I found a views.py file here in the Twitter directory and I thought it was relevant. So what I did was I copied uh, this file and then pasted it locally. 
to override uh, some of the functions in this file. And I actually did the same thing for another file, and I called it authviews.py because this was views.py within the auth directory. And then, you know, looking through these two files, I thought, okay, this view function right here uh, in auth views must be the view uh, that's called when this URL is opened by the user. That was sort of uh, my hypothesis. And to test that, I decided to, you know, put some print statements here. And that's actually uh, my fourth tip for debugging uh, to be able to use print statements effectively. So let me show you how I usually go about using print statements uh, for debugging. Here, I'm just going to write uh, print yk1. Uh, you know, yk is my name. And the reason that I put my name uh, in my print statements when I'm debugging is so that they're very distinct. You know, sometimes there are a lot of uh, things being printed into the log. And this way, it's going to be much easier to find my print statements. And then the reason I put a number after my name is so that, you know, we can do things like uh, print yk1 here and then print yk2 here. And this way, uh, if we see both of them, we'll know that, you know, both of these parts are being executed. But if we only see yk1 in the log, we'll know that, you know, only this part is being executed, but not this part. So here, uh, just as an example, we can, you know, spam this whole function with print statements somewhere. Uh, so yk3 here and then yk4 here. And let's see what happens. Let me uh, just refresh this page. Uh, when I go to terminal, I see all of these yk1, 2, 3, and 4. So from that, we can tell that, you know, all of these uh, parts of this function are being executed. And then it goes to self.dispatch. So let's look into this function. Okay, so I looked into that function and then I kept repeating the same pattern. Uh, basically, analyze the code by using a bunch of print statements and then try to understand what's the next function that I should look at. And then eventually, I got to this function called get request token. So I kept doing basically the same thing as what I did earlier for this function. You know, I added a few more print statements and then I decided to focus on this particular variable uh, called the response because it looks like a response that we get from Twitter uh, when we try to do a Twitter login. And so I'm printing uh, the response variable here after the string response. So let's see what that looks like. It's just this one. Uh, we have response, and then the response variable is response 403. That's actually not that helpful, so we need to examine it you know, a little bit more carefully. And that actually brings me to my fifth tip for debugging, and that is to use a debugger effectively. So just in case you don't know what a debugger is, uh, it's a way to run this code and then stop it wherever you want and examine the code more carefully. So here I can do uh, import pdb python debugger and then pdb.set trace and this way we should be able to uh, when we refresh that page that we saw earlier we should be able to stop it right here. So in terminal when you're in the debugger you should see something like this uh, pdp pdb and then there are a lot of different commands here, but the only command that matters uh, here is p, which you can use to print anything you want to print. So if you do a p response, you should be able to print that. And if you do a response dot dict dot keys, you'll be able to see you know what variables uh, this object has. And there is a bunch of stuff here, but actually the only one that's important is content. And if we do response dot content, actually response dot content, this is what you see. Uh, I get callback URL not approved for this client application, which actually makes sense because you know I got rid of the URL uh, for the local application. So you might say, you know, what's the point of doing all of this? Well, the point is that you know I'm gonna go back to uh, the original code, and then here what we can do is we can print not just response, but also response.content, I think. So this way, uh, we'll be able to print more information about the error that we're getting. And we'll be able to do the same thing for our server in the cloud, too. So after that, I committed all of these changes on Git. And then I pushed those changes uh, to Heroku so we can test it there. 
And then, you know, on the Heroku version of the website, I made sure, you know, I'm still getting the same error. And I checked the logs with this command. And here, uh, this is what we're getting. Uh, response content is, uh, you know, a bunch of stuff here. And then the message is, could not authenticate you. So it's obviously different from the error that we saw earlier. And so I started thinking, you know, what could be the cause of this? Uh, could not authenticate you. Well, you know, one common uh, reason of not being able to authenticate is that the passwords are wrong, right? And it turned out uh, when I was copying my Twitter keys, uh, Twitter API keys from local to Heroku uh, using this thing called uh, environment variables, I missed one letter from, uh, from one of my passwords. And that's actually why I was getting this bug. And that's uh, why I, I ended up spending four hours just debugging it. Uh, you might say, you know, you could have checked it like in the first place when you got the bug, but sometimes you just don't think of it and, you know, you end up wasting time. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something new today. And if you have any other, you know, debugging tips, uh, feel free to share them in the comment section because, you know, other people might be able to learn from them. And I'm going to put the code I showed you today at this URL uh, as usual. And uh, thank you as always for watching my videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.